Hi everybody and welcome to the ASP Net Monsters. This is episode number 26. Uh, so that's a big number. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about uh, GitHub authentication using ASP Net Core. But before we get to that, we have an exciting announcement to make. And that exciting announcement is that our contest that we may or may not have been running uh, is no longer running. And the reason behind that is that you're all much smarter than we anticipated. So we have here, if you go to our, our GitHub repository here, uh, there is a repository called Irrelevant Code under ASP.NET Monsters. And in there, if you look at issue number two, you will see that one Abdullah Salim has uncovered the contest, he has solved the contest, and we are pretty miffed about it because we <laughs> were so confident, we were so confident in this contest that it would be running for years. We were like, oh, we don't have to worry about this. We'll just make fun of people, pretend that there is no contest because no one's going to solve it in, in the next six months. Exactly. And we got, what, like four episodes in? We got four episodes in, and Abdullah sent us this uh, wonderful explanation. And, I mean, this is, like, a legit breakdown here because there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, I mean, there is – first of all, you have to have – you would have had to have – found the repository, nestled in there among all the other ones that we've got for our sample code that we've put up for various episodes. You would have had to download it, because if you just look at the code, you can't, you won't be able to do it, like, you won't be able to figure it out on your own. There's things like a package that has to be restored from NuGet in order to pull down a value that's not displayed anywhere, but they're going to have to use that value when you find a, a, a hidden JavaScript method that you must invoke from the console, and then, like, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it was legit figured yeah. out. <laughs> and you know what, like, super impresses me about the answer is, like, the detail that he went into explaining it. Like, I wouldn't do this yeah, for my absolutely. job. This was, this was a for fine, a, and, like, a I mean, broke down every part of the, every step along the way and showed how to invoke these little pieces, and, yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, so kudos, and we will send you on your prize uh, at some point in the next little while and let me tell you folks the next contest is going to be out of this world difficult absolutely like, it's going to be insane <laughs> i i don't even know like you're probably going to have to build a particle accelerator i'm just going to throw that out there like unless you have access to a particle accelerator you're probably going to have to build one to solve the next contest. And the promise that we are making is that there will be no base64 decoding of strings. That will not be that easy. Abs absolutely <laughs> not. We have done that twice now. It is well sussed out. Uh, we're probably going to go all the way to like base66. We're going to skip base65. Altogether. Pff, forget yeah. that. You guys are too <laughs> smart. So base66. Okay. Wonderful. So, shall we get on with this episode? Let Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna uh, break you in, break it in and show you what we're gonna do here. So, I would like to, um, in inside of my application, I would like to authenticate using GitHub. So, I want you know, I'm I'm creating an application. I'm targeting other developers. Developers are likely going to have a GitHub account because. Um, like what else is there? There's GitHub. So we've got we've got GitHub running, and we know that we've got these accounts on there. Maybe it's organization, whatever. We want to provide our users access to our application. So, um, I what I'm what I've done here. The first thing that I've done is I've pulled in um, a project. So or uh, a reference to a package. Let me just uh, pull that up really quickly. Uh, Project.json. So it's this guy right here. Microsoft ASP.NET Authentication.OAuth. Okay, and that's going to be what enables us to set up the, uh, there's an extension method like, for uh, configuring the application, so it's just an extension method on iApplication Builder, and we need to pass in some options. We're going to come back to that because I want to break that down a little bit and how that works, but first I want to show the rest of what we need to do in order to get this thing set up. So I've uh, set up my secrets.json, and you can see here I've, what I'm expecting is a GitHub ID and a secret, a client ID and a client secret. Now these can be stored you know, these are things that I'm just putting them in my secrets.json. So again, you know, we talked about in uh, just a previous episode about how the the secrets file is not actually persisted out to 
um, our repository. It's, it's stored on our local file system, but it's not included as part of the project. So th what I'm doing here, and I, I'll just peek forward a little bit in my GitHub options, but I'm reading that out of the configuration, okay? So I need to set this GitHub client ID and client secret. Those come from the GitHub website. But in order to configure my, my application, I actually need one other thing. I need the address of my SSL endpoint. And I get that by doing enable SSL, and then I get this little 44363. So I can copy this guy to the clipboard, and then I can move over to um, developer applications. And this is just inside, you know, when you, when you go into your settings on your profile, you go to OAuth applications, developer applications, I'm going to register a new application. And we'll just call this one um, GitHub Auth Test. And you know I'm just going to throw in uh, GenFu in here because it doesn't really matter what the homepage URL is. It's just kind of a, a way to relate. There's some metadata that you have about your application and whatnot. But what's important here is that I need to do my GitHub callback URL. And I've got, I'm appending this thing sign in GitHub. So this is the authorization, authorization callback URL. This is going to be where I'm redirected back to in order to complete that, that um, uh, sign in process. So I'm going to register application. And now I get my client ID and my client secret. Did you mean to have the additional token at the end there? I lost what you said there, Simon. You cut out on uh, me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, did you mean to have the the action on the end there, that authorization call? Oh, I, I did. Absolutely. Yes. Sign All in right. GitHub. There we go. And now it's on. Thank you. That would not have worked. We would have seen an OAuth error there, <laughs> and we would have been able to resolve that, actually. So that's a really good catch. I thank you. I didn't see that. That didn't save. Okay, so we've got that sign in GitHub. Now, this actually correlates to one of the configuration options that we've got back in our um, in our settings. So we can see here that the callback path is actually right here. Now, this gets registered via the authentication middleware and the OAuth um, um, authentication provider will actually um, set up that and uh, capture that path. It, it becomes a registered route in the application. And then there's a handler that gets kicked in and things happen from there. Um, the magic of which I'll, I'll reveal in a little bit by pointing you at the source code for the um, <laughs> for the OAuth uh, authentication. Uh, left as an exercise for the reader. Left as an uh, yes, for the reader. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so a couple of things going on. I've got my um, I, I've got my SSL set up. I, I've pulled in that project. Now I need to put these uh, client ID and client secret in. So I can just copy these guys directly from here. And I'm going to paste this in. So I've got that one. And I've got my client secret. And that goes right there. So I'm just going to save that out. Now these get loaded as part of startup. So it's I'm in the development environment. I would need to replace these if I was shipping elsewhere. For example, if I was out in Azure, I would set them up as the app configuration settings and in the configuration tab. But here I am adding user secrets because I'm in the development environment. Now if you add them out in Azure, it'll be picked up as environment variables and that gets loaded at the startup of your application. User secrets are just loaded from a local JSON file on the fly. So that I can change these, set these, and I just restart my app locally and I don't have to exit out of Visual Studio and all those other things that are that happen with um, environment variables. Okay, so um, I want to then, uh, with that, those things in place, I'm actually ready to run. So I've got my um, my little use OAuth authentication, my GitHub options are present, and uh, I'm basically with that package going, I'm going to just give this a try. So I'm going to hit F5, we're going to run the app. We'll pop back in and see what we get. Now, one of the cool things is is that once we have uh, registered and like any of these uh, providers that they've got, these third-party authentication providers that they've, they've shipped, including the OAuth one, provided we set the properties correctly on it, it will actually display for us automatically in uh, you can see here we use another service to log in. So I've got this uh, GitHub um, piece right here. Now let's have a look and I'll show you something else that we can kind of go back to these options for. There's an authentication scheme. This is actually what is used to display on any buttons that are there. The mm. display name is what is used in the tooltip. So you could, maybe you've got a more friendly name or something that you want to use or maybe in your authentication scheme you want to put a token in there that'll be replaced on the fly for, um, to put an, a logo in or an icon or something. So um, just to kind of show how that works, um, now I need to, my machine is dragging here, but we've got the GitHub text on the button and then we've got the login using your GitHub account. That's the display name that gets rendered. So if we go and look at our login template 
and I will just scroll down here. Let me see. Where is it? Use another service to log in. It checks to see if there's any external authentication schemes configured. And if not, it'll s display a little thing, help text for you. This is just the default template. But then it'll loop over all of the login providers that are present. And we can see here, we get the authentication scheme as the value of the button. So that'll be the text. And then the tooltip that is uh, given to us is the, uh, there's the, actually, there's the button, of the text for the button right there. And the display name is get, get, is what gets put into the tooltip. Okay, so that's the login piece. Let me go back to the app. I'm gonna hit login to GitHub. Now this is a brand new app. We just created this. I called it the GitHub auth test. So I expect to see that when I hit GitHub and you can, we can see here there's no users currently. So I should be able to go here Go to my GitHub thing and the GitHub auth test by Mr. James would like to access your account. Okay, one thing to talk about here right now, public data only. Um, this isn't much more than what is available if you view from somebody's GitHub profile. So if you want to have more access to things like uh, for example, the repositories that this person have or which organizations they're part of, <laughs> you're going to need to provide additional scopes. Unfortunately, the default implementation of the I, of the uh, OAuth uh, authentication provider options, look at that guy right there. The scope that's presented in the OAuth provider is a new hash set of strings and it is a get only. Th so there's actually no way to specify additional scopes. So the solution here would be probably to inherit from this or inherit from the same, like the, you, we'd have to set up the entire provider and you know you could use a lot of what's here in the OAuth options. Um, I couldn't find a really good way to extend this uh, right out of the box, but maybe that's something we can explore in a blog post or something like that as a follow-up. Okay, so that said, we get to see these bits, only the public bits. I say authorize that application. Now, um, the all of the traditional OAuth pieces happen, those exchanges happen, and I get this hello James Chambers. Now, I wanna prove that we actually have, like I mean, obviously, uh, this is all we've needed to get this far in, but I want to show what could happen here if I, um, I actually, I think I have this, I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. What I'm going to do is in my uh, homepage or like on the index page in this view, I'm just going to loop over all of the claims and output the type and the value to show you the ones that came from GitHub, and I can just refresh the page now, and we can see that we've got some ASP.NET uh, bits, we've got some, um, the authentication method is GitHub, that's the name that we provided. We've got this name identifier and this name, these are claims that are added to our account after we've hmm. correctly signed in. Well, that's really nice. Boy, that seemed pretty easy to do. Um, it did. So, I mean, like, the, the, again, the key things are we're going to need to, uh, we pull in that package, we configure the options for OAuth, we create, or we have to set up SSL on our project, we have to create the application on GitHub using our callback information, and you set up, you know, like a different callbacks for different environments. You've probably got a local test environment that you're going to be using and whatnot. And then you have a production one, which makes sense because then all of, we can set up our user secrets and every developer can be programming against their own. Um, all of those things happen pretty easily. All that's left now is to talk about some of these options. Okay. So, right, yeah, so the OAuth options, um, unfortunately, you know, uh, I did use as a base the code that's provided in one of the tests for the OAuth options, and I kind of extracted some of that, those bits out. So I'm pulling the client ID and secret from uh, user secrets that we've got stored in the system, but really they're from configuration. So wherever you've got it configured to pull in the key value pairs, that would be good. I've got the authentication scheme, the display name, those are fine. These are relevant to the OAuth provider that you are going to be talking to. This is the name of the claims issuer. So if you're gonna be using multiple um, claims issuers, so authenticating the user against multiple points, and you wanna check and say, okay, well, they're the member of the God administration mode group, well, where did, where did that claim come from if you're checking their roles? You want to make sure that it's the organization of the claims issuer that you actually trust. So this is this yeah. allows us just to kind of type that out and, and say who's actually doing this. Um, save tokens as claims. We saw the claims uh, represented inside of our... Um, our uh, state of the user. And then there's this events. We need to capture this on creating ticket. So now we, we've got this callback. We need to do some additional things. 
And it's specific to every OAuth provider. This is the flow that happens inside of, uh, for the GitHub OAuth uh, ticket creation pieces and token creation pieces. So we redirect users to GitHub to request access. Um, GitHub redirects back to our site. We get a, um, uh, here is a code that we get in response to step one that's passed back to our application. Um, we exchange that code for a token for an access token and from there uh, now that we get into scopes and things like that but we're not there those all of those steps though happen for us inside of this um structure inside of uh the security so i'm just at asp.net security and what i'm looking at is authentication.oauth and so if we go into here you can actually just uh, kind of follow the look at how the, their implementation is is implemented but basically the tail end of creating that ticket is executed here so uh, we pass in the context that we get back. There, this is just this is a the on creating ticket is a func OAuth creating ticket context as a task. So we have a, a task here that we've got that I've created, and this is now just retrieving the GitHub user from that endpoint, um, using some of the built-in uh, functionality of the OAuth provider, and finally reading out the user from the response and processing the claims, which is just another method that's just doing some null checks and reading some data out. So nothing too complicated here, just pulling these these guys out if these claims were provided and some of them are obviously not uh, because we weren't able to specify scopes, then um, mm -hmm. that's kind of where we would land. So um, unpacking that again, if I break that back down, um, this is kind of the gist of it. That's what we need to do. And that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so OAuth has a bit of a reputation. I think just it is a reputation for being kind of complicated and difficult to do and finicky because the specification for it is not as complete as it perhaps could be. Right. Uh, but this this seems to abstract away pretty much all of the difficult parts and make it pretty enjoyable. It does. And the parts that are concrete in the specification, I think, are well represented as part of this OAuth authentication provider. The only thing that you have to do is because everybody implements their own ticket exchange piece separately, you are going to have to wire that up on your own. Thankfully, this code is already freely available. So that's fantastic. So we, we could do GitHub, we could do any other OAuth provider too. So like Facebook, does, does Google still do OAuth provider? Um, yes, but the um, uh, the security project, the identity project actually um, already supports, let me just go back to security here, and I'll show you all the providers that are there by default. So um, there's a cookies based, pro there's Facebook, right. Google, uh, Microsoft account, OpenID, Twitter, and then OAuth. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's super useful and fun. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So normally this would be the part of the podcast where, or the, the episode where I asked if anybody had won our contest yet, and the I would be yes. really smug about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can't be smug about it today. No, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, James. And we'll see everybody next time on the next episode of ASP Net Monsters. Cheers. <laughs>